Chris Agarino and I'm here at Cisco Live in Las Vegas and I'm here with Justin Giardina from iLand and we want to talk to Justin a little bit about the iLand cloud offering. So Justin, can you tell me just a little bit about what's going on with iLand's cloud that's different than everybody else? Sure, so uh, a little bit of history about iLand. iLand's been around since 1995. We've had our roots in co-location, data center services, network services, and things like that. Around 2008, we started uh, infrastructure as a service and a disaster recovery as a service uh, for our customers that were really migrating out of these physical environments into the virtual. So if you fast forward from 2008 to where we are today, uh, Island has a comprehensive suite of infrastructure as a service, disaster recovery as a service, as well as uh, infrastructure as a service and DR as a service with security technologies built in. So I understand that Island has what I like to call northbound interfaces into your cloud offer. Can you tell our friends out there a little bit more why is that good? What's so, what's so cool about that? Sure, so a lot of the things we offer in the cloud today, is, as I mentioned before, the, the key word to, uh, or the key phrase to think about is comprehensive. So where we are with the comprehensive suite is if you can imagine, there's a lot of things that make up a cloud solution. You have everything from the compute to the network, you have uh, third party services like backup, uh, disaster recovery, uh, all those types of things. So what the API gives our customers is, our Northbound API is we allow the customer to really control their cloud from a programmatic uh, aspect via REST into all the functions that you can do in our UI. So for instance, it's as uh, simple things like maybe turning on a VM, rebooting a VM, to things like billing, to actually even failing over uh, the, to their DR environment. And what the API allows us to do is it also allows us to have uh, our console uh, not only run in a web browser, but do things like your mobile application. So a good use case for that is maybe there's a, a scenario where a customer is uh, uh, maybe leaving the, 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 the disaster for a hurricane, or maybe there's an earthquake in, say, Los Angeles. And in those situations, it's very hard for a customer to sometimes access their prem or maybe even get to a web UI. So by having a northbound API, it not only allows us to uh, tailor to the customers that have uh, development and, uh, developers and want to program the interface via REST, but also allows us to integrate things like mobile applications and things like that. That sounds uh, pretty powerful. So uh, one of the things I understand is that you guys are using Cisco's products underneath this thing, and if I'm not mistaken, that would be the NXOS API. So I'm wondering if maybe you could tell us a little bit about why you chose the NXOS API and how you're using it. Sure, so we really leverage the Cisco APIs in an external and an internal manner. So for internal, we use things like the UCS API, the NXOS API, and even things like the uh, newer uh, APIs, the REST API for the ASA. And how we use these internally is that we, we've built our own internal tracking system for things like capacity, uh, billing, data center usage, and things of that nature. And the way we're using these is to simply go out and, like for the instance in the UCS, maybe we want to keep track of how many blades we have, or maybe we want to uh, know how many uh, you know, uh, slots we have open in a chassis. Or on the Nexus side, maybe, we, maybe it's free ports or things like how many fiber channel ports we have or automatic zoning. And being able to use all the internal Cisco APIs is very powerful for us because we can streamline our internal uh, automation. And as far as the external users go, uh, again, if you can imagine customers have things like ASAVs, they have things like CSRs, and for us to be able to allow the customer to programmatically access these things, and also for us as a provider to uh, programmatically publish or, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there, uh, for, for us as a provider to uh, um, be able to deploy customers programmatically is very powerful. That, that sounds really interesting. So, how did you learn all? Did, did you have some help getting there? Was uh, I understand maybe a DevNet may have held a little bit of a hand in helping you guys out to get up to speed on some of these APIs. What do you think was some of the most exciting stuff that DevNet helped you with? So as far as the Cisco APIs go, we really are impressed with the standardization of the API. There's nothing uh, that we had to learn from a proprietary standpoint 
So if we have to deal with things like JSON and XML, these are all pretty standard in the industry. Uh, but using the developer.cisco.com site, following documentation, as well as uh, customer examples in the beginning or user community examples was very powerful to us. So that's a big plus in our uh, standpoint that we, from our standpoint, that we can leverage uh, industry standard things. That sounds really good. So I think uh, at this point we've talked a little bit about the product, we talked a little bit about the APIs both in your product and some of the ones that you use from Cisco, talked a little bit about DevNet, so I'd like to invite the uh, people watching this video to go ahead and visit us at developer.cisco.com for information about DevNet, and if you'd like to know a little bit more about iLand, Sure, you can follow us on at islandcloud at Twitter, and also I put up a URL. We have island.com and api.island.com, which we also offer full documentation uh, via our REST APIs so that users can get a look and feel or maybe get a demo account and start working with it. All right, thanks very much for watching, everybody.